Hey folks, just a quick update on where I'm at with my progress. I made quite a bit of progress since my last clip. Let me show you what I've been working on. I have got the new timing cover on, the new front cover. I have installed the air compressor. What you can't see down below is the differential. I've got that put back on. Um, let's see, what else? I've also got the uh, rack and pinion put back together. That's back on the car. I have the fuel rail installed. Um, trying to think of a couple, couple tips here. Also replaced the uh, pressure switch because it was broken. I think I broke it when I took it off or when I removed the air compressor. So I replaced the uh, pressure switch on the compressor. Um, let's see. I've been following my shop manual right here for specifications on torque. Uh, one thing that I've, one thing that I ran into uh, while putting everything back together, I was in the process of, or I was getting ready to install the harmonic, harmonic balancer and I came to find out that the uh, the tool that I have which looks like this this one here will not work that will not work for GM cars what you need is uh, part or tool number EN48034, which is a harmonic balancer installer. That is a uh, special GM tool for this project. Uh, the reason being is, and I can show you here, you know, this is the correct adapter. These threads, uh, let's see if you can read that, are, it's, it's a metric thread. It is M16 by 2 and the threads on the crankshaft are recessed far enough so you can't get a grab with this adapter so you'll need you'll need that special GM adapter for it um, let's see here everything else is going pretty well let's see I have uh, We've got new gaskets on the valve cover and let's see I'm trying to think of what else I've done oh let's see if you can see here that's a little dark but I've got new gaskets on the plenum apologize it's dark oh one thing I didn't mention in my earlier video or in my earlier segment was my other mistake I, I did point it out and that was this piece here on the timing cover the engine front cover I was trying to remove well I did remove this bolt for this check valve on the oil pump but I didn't realize that it was actually behind this this ledge for the gasket and I broke it off so that was wound up buying a new one from GM and that cost me I believe it was about $176 uh, from GM so that coupled with my $50 mistake on the oil pan you know plus tax about $220-$230 um, but again I kinda look at the big picture the I, I think the total cost well I'm, I'm just guessing I haven't called around yet but I, I believe the total cost for repair 
for this project would be probably in the neighborhood of maybe about 2000 maybe 1800 to $2,200. So I look at it as it was a it was a lesson learned for sure um, however again the total cost is is a small percentage of what it would have costed me um, had I taken it somewhere taken it to a shop um, to have it replaced so I'm gonna continue working I've got some cross member pieces to put back on on the underside of the car I have the uh, uh, four-wheel drive disconnect to put back on. I have the intermediate shaft and, of course, all the other components for the steering, um, as well as the bearing hubs, the brake calipers, so on and so forth. And uh, I've, I've got the water pump that still needs to go on you know, here. Uh, the kit came with a new gasket, so I'll probably use that. Um, I think what I'm going to do when or before I put the timing cover back on, I'm going to fill these cavities with oil. I'll probably use about a quart or two uh, just because all of the, the lifters have dried out over the past you know, two, two and a half weeks since I've had everything open. So. I'm probably just going to pour some oil over everything. Obviously not getting oil into the the wells where the spark plugs go. Um, you know, I did get the, the fuel lines hooked up here. And that's it for now. That's, that's just a, a quick update on where I'm at. All right, good morning, folks. I've got a quick update. I'm back at it today, putting everything back together on the Envoy. Um, I'm at the point of the program where I'm installing the differential. Actually, I installed the differential yesterday, which is on the driver's side. And and my little helpers here say hi. Hi. <laughs> yes, you do. And. So before I put the differential disconnect on this side, on the passenger side, you have to install the intermediate shaft, which goes through the oil pan. Now I don't have the special GM tool for installing that. So what I did was I used the stud, or one of the studs, from the uh, CPU mounting. And these threads are actually the same size as the threads in that intermediate shaft and so this is this is what it looks like here um, so what I did was I just used a uh, four millimeter socket and just loosely threaded this in to the end of the intermediate shaft and then I just used a pair of vice grips um, to grab a hold of that shaft or the bolt and then slide that through and guide it over to the differential. Um, and the reason I did that instead of just using my hands was there is a seal, there's an inner seal on the differential that I wanted to make sure that I did not, or that I did my best to not uh, damage, nick, cut, bend, or anything like that. Um, so I think I've got it in and now I'm going to install the disconnect. Okay, now I've got the four-wheel drive disconnect back on, along with the uh, disconnect module here. And also, while I was under the car, I went ahead and installed some new polyurethane sway bar bushings up front, both, both sides. All right, I'm under the car now. I want to show you what my plan is for installing the harmonic balancer. Obviously, you have to torque that harmonic balancer down pretty tight. The spec is 110 foot-pounds plus 180 degrees. So the trick is, how are you going to hold that crankshaft so it doesn't rotate? There is a tool, supposedly, that uh, lines in the teeth of the flywheel. And I have read that the uh, that tool does not actually fit the envoys. So what I've what I've read on a couple different forums and what I'm going to try is using a uh, 
16 millimeter bolt and there is, I don't know how well you can see this, but there is a hole in the back of the uh, oil pan that will fit that 16 millimeter bolt just perfectly. There it is right there. So I'm going to put that 16 millimeter bolt into the hole and then lock it in on that bolt that holds the flywheel. So we'll see how that works. Um, again, I've read on a couple different forums, folks have tried this method and it has worked for them. Um, I'm hoping I don't shear that bolt or do any damage um, to the oil pan housing, but I think that's it's a pretty tight fit.